The Legend of Korra isn't just a sequel to the incredible world of Avatar The Last Airbender. It's a series that stands on its own, offering a complex world and cultural depth. With its arrival onto streaming platforms, it's captivated a new generation of viewers, drawn in by its rich animation and complex storytelling. This video dives into the world of Korra, exploring the historical parallels and cultural influences that underpin the series. From the Roaring Twenties in Republic City to the real-life politics shaping the conflicts. Let's dive in. We know that the Fire Nation from Aang's story mirrors an industrial revolution. This is continued in the show, however this time Republic City, the central location in The Legend of Korra, reflects the Roaring Twenties in America, particularly in New York City. As is clear with the two shows, the end of World War I gave way to a massive cultural shift. Known for its economic boom and cultural enrichment, it also faced significant social struggles, including class disparity and organized crime. Republic City mirrors this vibrant and volatile period. Amon, the antagonist in the first season, is similar to various revolutionary leaders who aim to revolt. His use of propaganda, charismatic leadership, and his radical vision of equality reflect aspects of leaders like Lenin or Mao. His goal to eliminate bending can be seen as a metaphor for class struggle, aiming to remove a power disparity, sort of like the communist ideologies these figures represented. They used tactics similar to those of the Bolsheviks or even the Luddites during the Industrial Revolution. Zahir, the antagonist of the third season, represents anarchist ideologies. We are part of a secret society dedicated to restoring freedom to the world. We are the Red Lotus. His belief in freedom from all forms of government and his method of achieving it draws direct lines to historical anarchism from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Cora and her friends eventually defeat the Red Lotus. But the impact of the chaos in Ba Sing Se drives the city into an economic despair for years to come. In this case, it's the military who seizes control. Like many others, one example is what happened in Sudan, where the military took power after the events of the president's removal. Kavira, on the other hand, represents the rise of totalitarian leaders who often emerge during periods of political instability. Her character is similar to people like Mussolini or Stalin, who consolidated power by promoting nationalism and enforcing strict control over all aspects of life, often under the guise of restoring order. I won't celebrate until the Earth Kingdom is 100% reunited. Her rule reflects parallels to the Nazis. She put her opposition and people who aren't ethnically part of the Earth Kingdom in concentration camps. She also obsesses over stabilizing a dangerous weapon that has the potential to level a whole city, which is similar to the idea of nuclear weapons in World War II. Republic City features a council and later an elected president, reflecting democratic principles that were spreading worldwide during the early 1900s. Varric, an eccentric businessman and inventor in the series, highlights the rise of media influence in society. Lee, do the thing! His manipulation of news and public opinion through mover films parallels the use of media by people like William Randolph Hearst, who is known for his role in influencing public opinion and policy through his newspaper empire. On the topic of technology, it's likely that Hiroshi Sato is pretty much the Henry Ford of the Avatar world. So that wraps up this video. Comment below what references you noticed from the show. If you enjoyed it, then let me know by liking this video. Ah, yes, you did it, Bolin. You did the thing. Mwah! If there's another movie or show you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.